Welcome back to the Mining Pod. We got your news roundup for your Saturday morning. We are recording this Friday morning. It is March 24th. I got Matt Kimmel from CoinShares with us. Matt, how you doing? I'm doing great. Ready to tackle some stories. Okay, we got five stories for everyone today. We're going to start off talking about Block, whose shares tumbled after a report from the Hindenburg Group, talking about how they don't think that the Block is up to good stuff. Then we're going to move over to talk about BlockFi and how they sold a bunch of equipment as they are unraveling in Chapter 11. Talk about BitDeer going public. Seems like they're actually going to move forward with the SPAC. Last two topics for the day, we're going to talk about Greenpeace releasing this new video talking about some artwork they uh, created to try to encourage Bitcoin to move to proof of stake. And lastly, a uh, little social commentary from a video clip from the Bankless guys talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum, which I think will be funny to go over. But we'll start off talking first about the Hindenburg report. So this came out earlier in the week, I think around Wednesday. Uh, Hindenburg Research is a short selling company. Basically, they spend a lot of time to research public companies and then they take out sizable short positions, which they then make a lot of money on when they release their reports. They've taken out a few companies in the past, but in this report, essentially they uh, said that Cash App and Block, which owns Cash App, has been uh, overstating the amount of accounts on the platform by as much as 50% or more, saying that it's very easy to create a duplicate accounts. It's also very easy to create accounts that don't uh, meet KYC standards for most banks. There's also some other weird things in this report, which I didn't really think mattered that much, which was like Cash App's prevalence within uh, gang culture and its usage in like rap videos, stuff like that, which was a little weird. That being said, uh, Block shares tumbled on the news by about 17%, and they are also threatening to sue Hindenburg Research for putting this one out. Any reactions to that story? Yeah, I mean, I think it's Charlie Munger who famously said, um, show me the incentives and I'll show you the outcome. I mean, they had the, they're had they notoriously known for taking massive short positions and then coming out with smear campaigns. That's like pretty clear what happened here. There has been some truth to some of the things that they've published in the past, but I don't know. The majority of this report to me seemed like, oh, Cash App is for criminals, right? And I couldn't help but just like have my wires crossed to the, you know, the common FUD argument that Bitcoin's for criminals. Um, and I don't know. Cash App is one of the you know, seemingly kind of few fiat on ramps left into into Bitcoin. Um, I hope that you know this doesn't affect their public image too much, um, and that like much of this is just kind of as I was saying before. FUD, um, but it'll it'll turn on in the future. I mean, the Hindenburg made a ton of money on this. It, maybe some more like independent research houses that are that are nonprofits and not taking short positions can come out with some uh, reporting on this sort of stuff. I'd be interested in that. Yeah, just some last thoughts on here. Uh, according to a CoinDesk article, which pulls from the report, it says our research indicates, however, that Block has widely overstated its genuine user counts and has understated its customer acquisition costs. Former employees estimate that forty to 75% of the accounts they reviewed were fake, involved in fraud, or additional accounts tied to a single individual. Uh, and of course, Block is known well for Cash App. It's also known well for its like point of sale service. So you go into a coffee shop and you could sell directly to it. And Block has like a whole tech stack built into it. So uh, the fact that they could be faking accounts would be very detrimental to their business model. Uh, I guess this is a story to follow. I don't know if we will touch up on it again, again on it because it has more to do with like traditional finance but block jack dorsey all that stuff is bitcoin related so we have to touch on it okay we will leave that story there and move over to block which is selling 4.7 million dollars worth of physical mining assets amid its bankruptcy block went to chapter 11 back in november uh, they still have a lot of mining equipment they were sort of using like this hosting model mostly uh with Blockstream, according to uh like the press releases from the time and now they're selling all this equipment as the uh, trustees of the Chapter 11 are going through accounts and trying to pay off bills and pay back creditors. Uh, BlockFi also had a very large mining finance business, which I believe is somewhat included in this Chapter 11 process. Um, don't have a lot of details in this article from the block on that. Throw it over to you, Matt. Yeah, I think background on this is that Celsius also had a, a major sale of mining equipment through their uh, Chapter 11 proceedings, and they sold... Um, I think it was like 1.4 maybe million and it was like 20 
700 machines, right? And so I guess like to think of the magnitude of this, this could be like 5,000 machines, which is a lot of mining equipment, right? Um, I think I saw like the, the purchaser who bid was somebody called US Farms. Interesting to note, I guess, to see if more news comes out about them, probably a private miner, seems like they're getting bigger. Um, but I mean, that's kind of it on this story. Block five news is old. Uh, a lot of people selling mining machines. This is kind of old news, but a new story. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people who are in the mining scene actively knew that like these things were going on. There's been a lot of auctions for equipment or just like outright sales. So that's going on. Okay, let's move over to the next story. I'll give you Bitdeer has been trying to move uh, public for quite a while. This is a story, honestly, that goes back all the way to the China Bitcoin mining ban, which you know, we're coming up on the two year anniversary of that, which is pretty wild to think about. But uh, a lot of these Chinese-based companies had to move over to the U.S. They had to reorganize themselves, and they had to deploy in the U.S. Bitdeer is one of those. Uh, they have about 700 megawatts of access to energy, I believe, in the United States. And one of their largest facilities in the U.S. is actually right next to the Riot facility in Rockdale, Texas. Uh, there's not like a ton of information out there, but we do have a little bit of information from the SPAC that they've been trying to move forward on. Uh, it's with this company called Blue Safari Group taking quite a while they first announced this back in november of 2021 uh the peak of the bull market but nothing has really precipitated yet because it's an all downhill for bitcoin mining companies since then i think we're getting like a little bit of a break and so they might be taking the opportunity to reorganize and go public via the spac i mean that's what this news finally from the sec which came out i believe today says that uh they're kind of reorganizing and getting ready to go public uh, the original valuation was for $4 billion. I'm assuming that whatever value will come to, which I did not see, and it may be somewhere deep in this report, but I didn't see it. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be far less than $4 billion because, again, it was originally announced at the top of the bull market. So maybe like a 70% drawdown on that valuation makes sense. Yeah, more public illicit hash rate. I don't like. Uh, finally, but dear, this has been something in the works for a long time. Next story, uh, Greenpeace uh, hired uh, a hit piece on Bitcoin and the environment. Uh, do we have a video for this? We do have a video. Play the video. Think Bitcoin's not bad for the environment? Think again. Introducing my newest collaboration with Greenpeace. I'm Benjamin Von Wong, and I use art to raise awareness for issues like plastic pollution and climate change. Six months ago, I was studying the impacts of climate change in Greenland, where I saw firsthand what the climate crisis looks like. Greenland's ice sheet is melting fast, and witnessing it with my own eyes was absolutely gut-wrenching. That's where I met Rolf from Greenpeace and learned about how fixing Bitcoin could help solve climate change. Here's Rolf. Greenpeace is campaigning to change Bitcoin's code so it stops fueling the climate crisis and harming communities. Bitcoin's the world's most popular digital currency, and right now it's using as much electricity as entire countries, and most of that's coming from polluting fossil fuels like coal and gas. Bitcoin's climate damage got 125 times worse in just five years, but with the code change, we could cut the electricity needed to run Bitcoin by more than 99%. But how to make sure that people paid attention? Enter the Skull of Satoshi, a symbol I built connecting Bitcoin and environmental destruction. This 11-foot skull made from hundreds of pieces of electronic waste, like the kind generated from Bitcoin mining, is months in the making. And hopefully, you get to see it in person soon. Changing Bitcoin's code is going to take teamwork. We need everyone involved, from companies and government officials to crypto enthusiasts, and climate activists. So like and share this video and follow Greenpeace USA to join the movement to change Bitcoin's code. <laughs> like and subscribe to change the code. That's my favorite part about it. It's like a traditional vlogger out there. Now, this is terrible. I saw this yesterday. Someone dropped in a group chat I'm a part of, and it immediately caught my eye, not because of the video, not because of the message, but entirely because of that very badass skull of Satoshi, which I definitely want to see I'm already seeing some bids online. People have inscribed it on the Bitcoin blockchain using the ordinal theory. And wow. there may be an appearance at Bitcoin Miami, or at least there's been a lot of requests for that to occur. So this made my week, certainly. Uh, I think this thing is is so sick. I changed my Twitter profile picture to it, and I intend to keep it for quite a bit. I love that people are doing that. Out creative. I know. Um, yeah, my thoughts, bad messaging, cool skull. And also, it's like so counterintuitive. Look at all of those motherboards that made this giant uh, sculpture. Like, 
Can we talk about waste? Like, yeah, that could be even more useful. Those could be like mining Bitcoin. Um, it wouldn't be very effective. But no, the the funny thing about that is like none of those things were actually like from ASICs. They were entirely from like other computer hardware. So I guess it's a, it's it's pricey though to make a sculpture out of ASICs right now. Like Bitcoin might be down, but you know, hash boards still cost like four hundred bucks. So I I love that they showed flare gas like burning of flare gas yeah. it's yeah. like that that's beautiful that's poetic <laughs> okay we'll leave that one there but definitely go check out well, i guess we should the full video here uh so you don't really need to check it out anymore but maybe go online and change your profile picture to it because it's pretty awesome okay last story for the day we got the bankless bros on here and confession i do like the bankless bros i think they're pretty funny uh and i think they actually make decent content for uh the amount of stuff that they they do cover but we're going to throw some shade on them this morning because this is a funny topic. Bitcoin has incredible narrative market fit for this moment in time. I but, I actually, but I actually think Ethereum has better product market fit for <laughs> actual wartime. All right. So, so like if you talk about proof of stake, I would 100% argue that having um, thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of decentralized validators around the world that can run validators from their own homes, locations, wherever they have an internet connection, and is much more- large scale mining operations yes, that can be bombed and seized. It is much more censorship resistant in times of war than something like uh, proof of work, for example. No, no, it almost uh, hurts. Why are you trying to convince yourself or are you trying to convince me? I don't know, but miners out there, beware because you might get bombed. It's <laughs> a result of that video that I uh, Yeah, I kind of want to take a shower after watching that. Uh, so the original tweet there that they were talking about was actually from David Hoffman saying that Bitcoin is for times of war and Ethereum is for times of peace. I think there's some nice sentiment to that because like we are, might be coming to a crypto war right now, right? And Bitcoin just being so decentralized, there's no leader. Uh, you know, you can make a mining operation, you can plug in immediately, you can download the code and just run Bitcoin and no one's going to bother you. Yeah, I think it's pretty decent sentiment. And then Ethereum for times of peace, I kind of agree with that also. Like if the SEC and other regulators weren't really caring about tokens and stuff like that, Ethereum is sort of a peacetime instrument. To the other point from Ryan Sean Adams there, I think it's complete bullshit because think about it. Ethereum has a far larger attack surface just by the way that it's constructed than Bitcoin. So no, don't like don't go and say that just to shill your bag. Uh, I still love Ethereum and people who have been following my work for a while know that like we still do Ethereum topics on this channel every once in a while because I think it does matter. Uh, but I think his point there is really silly. And then the bombing, of course, is just like, come on, like, are you serious? That's what we got to be worried about is people dropping bombs on top of uh, computer warehouses. That's that's your argument. I mean, you kind of stole the words out of my mouth. There's just a larger attack surface. It, I don't even think this is really like a a debate. I think even in Ethereum circles, people kind of see the trade-offs and just kind of choose. I don't I don't even know what to say about this. It's like I have more to say, so it's okay. I think like the validator <laughs> point is interesting and like that was the reason for proof of stake, right? Like in Bitcoin originally you had your node, your wallet, and your miner all wrapped up in one, but over time it made more sense for those things to be individual. Ethereum but and proof of stake is so easy to get. You buy it. Like it you, is easy to get. Important, you have to procure ASICs and electricity. Like it's so much more challenging. I, I, Definitely, I think the point they're trying to make here is like you can be a whole stack contributor to the network. You can mine, you can host, and you can run the code with your node all in the same place. And that means that like anyone can participate in the network fully all over the globe. While in Bitcoin, like you could maybe only do two of three, or if you're really lucky, you can do three of three. And so, like, there is an argument there that it might be harder to kill those those things, like those things that are, like, more of a tech stack. But on the whole, I think the argument is pretty flimsy. Okay, we'll leave it there, though, because uh, I think we're running out of gas here. We got to shut down the show for the weekend. Everyone listening, thank you for doing so. Uh, we have been sending out our inscriptions for the mining pod. So if you are into ordinals, sorry you missed out because you didn't email me, but we sent out about 12. Uh, we did send out 12 inscriptions onto the Bitcoin blockchain and the people who listen to the show will be tweeting them out periodically to show off the cool artwork that we designed. Uh, for everyone else who's listening, thanks for doing so. Give us a like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, and we will see you next week with more interviews with Bitcoin miners.
Peace.